platform of vendors in Austria and also definitely investors. So thank you so much for your attention. And let me see if I can pull up that little demo for you so that you can see how the app works. There we go. So this is how it works. When you see red one, that means you use your right hand and right field. And on the contrary, if you happen to see blue line in it, then you use your left hand and left field. The first dot is between right, uh, red and black, so you tap here in between. And the second dot is on yellow line, so within the right field, I tap one, yellow. Just one more. So now you see blue line, so I use left hand and left field. The first one is sitting on the yellow, so within this field, I tap on it. And second one is between black and blue, so I tap on this space. So that's how it works. And we're heavily AI um, dependent in a way so that uh, we collect a lot of data. And from those um, two data points of uh, time stamped finger tapping and also its accuracy, we generate over 10 parameters for decision making um, analysis. And that's how we actually detect the dementia. Thank you so much. And you can definitely reach me at um, this. And we're actually in the process of moving from the Netherlands to the UK. Thank you. Thank you very much Harry, for the nice presentation. Thank you. All right. So our next presenter is again a company based in Austria. And the presentation will be carried out by Ms. Clara Pula. Clara, please feel free. Thank you so much and thank you for the opportunity to speak to you all today. Um, my name is Clara and I work for the company Probando. Uh, Probando is specialized in recruiting suitable participants, healthy or patients for clinical trials and non-clinical studies, product tests and surveys. And for this purpose, we have developed a, a matchmaking solution and also plan and implement public relations for studies. Um, what is our goal? Our goal is to support researchers and companies in their work and to facilitate the access of interested participants uh, in clinical trials or studies, yes. And our vision and mission is uh, connecting the right people to create a better future for everyone. Next slide, please. And as mentioned before, um, our matchmaking solution connects uh, on the one hand side um, pos uh, potential participants with clinical trials and on the other hand side, researchers with their target group. Next slide, please. Um, we are already um, working with a lot of pharmaceutical, pharmaceutical companies and also medtech companies, um, also in, in Austria, Germany and Switzerland, but also in the UK, US, and um, we are expanding constantly. And um, right now we have our matchmaking solution, um, probando.io, and um, also we are currently working on a payment solution, a feasibility check, and also on a compliance app. Next slide, please. Um, well, our benefits for each study provider is um, our matchmaking um, algorithm, which will um, match um, the participants with the right studies in the background. So as a participant, you can sign up you can uh, let us know more about your profile, about your healthcare status, and in the background, you will be matched with the right study for your needs. Uh, we also do some sort of digital pre-screening, which means we can implement questions regarding um, inclusion, exclusion criteria, um, and then we can um, also help study centers, for example, or our companies to um, sort out um, the right participants for, for the clinical trial and or or the product test um, all the things we're doing is personalized so um, which means there is no um, how do you say it um, there is no overall thing we can uh, can can uh, we are doing but we look at each study individually to make sure we gain the we are we are um, creating the perfect recruiting concept for for the customer needs so um, therefore, next slide, please. We are, we were able to be more, uh, eight times more active. Um, that means um, that we have on the one hand side, a very active community, um, which is 
good because we're constantly growing. Our database is constantly growing, which is also very good for um, the um, the budgeting. <laughs> so, um, and on the other hand side, we are we are now able to recruit pretty pretty fast. So, um, which means that we are able to uh, recruit the target participants. 15 to 20 percent faster than without our help and um, yeah of course um, next slide please we as, as i told you uh, as i told you before um, we are uh, already working in um, austria germany switzerland uh, france uk ireland belgium belgium usa and canada and the um, next um, countries are planned for this year this is Poland, Bulgaria, Spain, Portugal, Italy, Central America, and South America. And it's always possible to conduct a new study in a, other, in a different country uh, within only two weeks. Next slide, please. And um, because, of course, uh, maybe you're wondering why it's important also uh, for this um, setting, we're able to uh, recruit very specific Groups, which means we are we already had a lot of studies, for example, for Biogena, um, a nutrition company, and they were looking for uh, participants at the age of 60 plus with a, diff uh, with a specific um, uh, inclusion exclusion criteria, and which with our help it is possible to um, recruit the participants as well, even though they um, might be. Um, not very you might think that they are not very uh, keen in digitalization but that's that's not true at all um, our um, recruiting um, experience showed us that that's not the case and they were also very um, we recruited those um, groups as well very very fast next slide please yeah um, of course if you are looking for um, participants for your study or product test and you don't know how to do it uh, please feel free to reach out anytime um, here you have my contact details and i'm looking forward to hearing from you thank you thank you very much Clara, for the nice and concise uh, presentation uh, that being said let's move forward with our agenda uh, the next uh, presenting uh, person will be Miss Lucia Panese from Imaginary, a company based in Italy. Lucia, would you like me to switch the slides for you? Uh, yes, please, let's try. <laughs> Hello, everyone mm -hmm. from Italy. I'm Lucia Pannese, I'm the CEO of Imaginary, an SME based in Milano, Italy. So, next, please. Thank you. Uh, we are a multidisciplinary team, and since 18 years, we use games uh, psychology and games mechanics in projects that aim at behavioral change. Uh, we started with training and education far back 18 years ago, and then through very many EU-funded projects, um, we changed quite quickly to healthcare, which is now our core uh, market. Next, please. Um, so the, the cooperation idea that I would like to present here, uh, it rotates around our main product, which is called Rehability, and that's a game-based tele-rehabilitation system which can be used, of course, for telerehabilitation, which is the main area, but also for active aging, as well as uh, it is the starting point for uh, quite some projects about healthcare related solutions for patient engagement and empowerment. And by the way, we're one of the partners of the Be Care product project that you heard at the very beginning with Kai. So next, please. I show you the solution through a video that was, uh, that I hope is playing. Just a, just a second, please. I'll share my PowerPoints uh, where I have the video. Ah, oh, okay. All right, just share it. Okay, that looks good. Okay. Okay. So um, this video is playing in a in a neurology rehab hospital in Milano. Uh, maybe you can put it a bit bigger, please. Um, this is the gym that they, okay. So this is actually the, uh, the, the rehab center for, uh, both residents and uh, daily, uh, patients that come, uh, in a sort of day hospital, um, 
mechanism. So this is a patient, a neurology patient playing with one of our games. We use RGBD cameras, which are little cameras like this, which are able to read the skeleton of a patient. So without the need of wearing anything complex, the patient moves freely in front of the screen and has to interact with the game. Uh, the patient can interact with uh, upper limbs or lower limbs with the trunk and balance with movements like sitting up and standing uh, from up from a chair um, to accomplish his uh, physiotherapy. So uh, motor exercises as well as cognitive stimulation. The idea is that this kind of um, exercises has to be pathology specific. So we work uh, targeted per pathology groups. The neurology version is already certified as a medical device, and we are working on other solutions, which we will see in a second. Um, so the, the patient is interacting with a personalized game, and on the other side of the system, it's a, a complex system um, where, the, where the server is based in the cloud. You have also a doctor station, which is this one, where the therapist can set a personalized therapy plan, as well as watching um, full range of data, um, which give the idea of the progress of the therapy, but also quite some details uh, of the single session. Uh, we won several awards that you saw quickly. So next slide, please. Oops. Wait just a second. No, no problem. Have it. All right. There you go. Okay. So uh, what we're looking for is actually uh, different things. Uh, because we're a small company, we don't have the strength of um, doing business development everywhere. But clearly, some pathologies are the same. I mean, for example, a stroke is a stroke, or the neurology um, solution was proven very interesting already also for COVID patients. And uh, unfortunately, their, their problems are the same everywhere. So we're looking for a network of distributors, which need to be uh, like-minded companies. So companies we, uh, who are already in the field, who know what the software is, and in case we can also combine our solution with their own, so that we go in a way also for some uh, sort of connected care solutions overall. Um, we are looking also, of course, uh, for partners with complementary technologies in general. For example, one candidate could be a telemonitoring system, which um, normally does not have a telerehabilitation component, which can be added uh, with ours. Uh, and of course, funding to implement other versions. Next, please. Other versions are cardiac, um, for example, a kid's version. Um, musculoskeletal diseases and so on. On some, we are working already. Uh, some others are still waiting in the pipeline. The expertise that we have is, uh, as I said, we're multidisciplinary. We have psychologists working with uh, several technical um, people, so different technical um, competencies. We have graphical artists. We have learning experts because anyway, there is a component of learning behind because you want to people to adhere to the therapy. So they have to understand what they're doing and how it's uh, progressing. Um, we are experts also in gamification strategies. Normally we do user-centered design. So the games that you saw were co-created with the patients. So we start with the specialists, of course, to analyze what patients have to do, but then the game has to be co-designed with the patients so that they're motivated to use. Um, we design and develop the tech then ourselves. And as you saw at the very beginning, we are quite expert in European research. We won over 30 European projects. Uh, so, mainly the areas are healthcare and training. We work sometimes also in other fields because then you can um, avoid some sort of bias. We, you experiment new technologies and then you can maybe transport them again back to healthcare. The picture you see there is in Milano. It's the uh, Microsoft Techno Center where they have created an e health experience with um, a sort of clinical pathway through the patient journey. And the telerehabilitation uh, solution shown there is ours. The next, please. Thank you. So these are my contacts. I'm very happy to get in contact for any further research or business development uh, or even discussing some combination of components. Thank you very much. Uh, thank you very much for the really nice and concise presentation. Lucia, I just I have one quick question because you mentioned that your company moved from the active and healthy aging market to the healthcare market. Was it the size of the healthcare market that attracted you or what was the 
Let's say the uh, uh, no, no. We didn't move from the active and healthy aging market to healthcare. We moved mainly from um, the beginning with training projects to healthcare projects, because okay. in healthcare you can change much more. I mean, the impact is much bigger than in training. Mm -hmm. I understand. Yeah. Thank you very much, Lucia, for the nice. You're welcome. Thank you. And by the way, it's in fourteen languages already, so um, wow, it, it's quite available. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Lucia. All right, so let's move uh, forward with our uh, presentations, going slowly towards the end of our uh, pitch sessions. Thank you very much for your concise presentation so far. So our next presenter is Mr. Paul Isaris from SciFi. Paul, would you like to take over? Yeah. Um, can you uh, hear me? Would you like me to switch the slides for you? Yeah, yeah. Thank you. All right, perfect. So, hi, uh, my name is Paul. Um, I work for uh, Sci-Fi and I would like to uh, both uh, congratulate you and thank you for the invitation and the organization today. So, uh, Sci-Fi stems from Science for You and it is a, uh, if you can uh, ch change the slides. Yeah, uh, so Sci-Fi is a not-for-profit organization that uh, we build software applications uh, for a societal, with a societal impact. And we freely offer them to all, meaning that we uh, usually deal with open source uh, software. Uh, we have expertise in artificial intelligence uh, and assistive technologies, and also in European Union projects like Horizon 2020 and Erasmus Plus. Uh, we have built several games, video games for the blind, uh, news applications, a, a news application that is powered by AI for the content. Um, Applications for e-democracy um, and more assistive technologies. So, uh, next slide, please. So, the first uh, cooperation idea is about uh, an assistive uh, technology application that we have built that is called uh, the Anya. So, uh, the Anya is a mobile app uh, for Android and for iOS uh, that uh, offers uh, free exercises. Um, with uh, co cognitive exercise and activities that can be printed. So this application is targeted uh, for carers of people with early stage dementia and of, uh, for health professionals working in the field of dementia. So this um, application has uh, a wide variety of exercises for people who are battling early stage dementia. Uh, along with uh, Diania, we have also built Diania Marketplace, which is a content creation web app for Diania that people can log in and, and they can create new content that will be available through the mobile app. So, uh, as a corporation idea, we are seeking dementia experts who will create printable, uh, printable cognitive exercises uh, in one of the languages that Diania is available. Uh, the ANI right now is available in Greek, English, Spanish, and Italian. Uh, so, next slide, please. And the second cooperation idea is about another application, assistive application of ours called Token Play. So, Token Play is an application that is used, a desktop application for Windows or Linux, uh, that allows users with motion problems, let's say with cerebral palsy or uh, communication problems, to communicate and uh, train their cognitive skills. Um, so the application is mainly addressed to people who suffer from aphasia, uh, for example, due to a brain damage or from, from a stroke or something, and uh, to people with communication issues due to movement, movement impairments and difficulties in speech. So they can log in and they can see a grid of, of words and they can communicate with their environment that they are thirsty or that they are in pain or that they want something. And apart from the communication module, the application also has a, a game a module in which they can also see a wide variety of exercises and games, cognitive games, in order to perform training. So this application is of course uh, free to use and it's available in Greek, English and German. So now we are seeking again health experts in order to provide content, communication cards and cognitive exercises for the token play marketplace, which is again a content create, creation uh, marketplace, which 
in which users can create an account and then they can upload their own images and sounds in order to create content for the token play application. Um, next slide, please. So we are uh, looking for dementia related organizations for the Diania uh, Dementia app. Um, and we, we are looking also for organizations dealing with cerebral palsy and related platforms and problems for the token play application uh, for people with aphasia or cerebral palsy. Uh, next slide, please. So we, off, we also offer our expertise. Uh, our fields of expertise are artificial intelligence, technical consulting, and architecture and implementation of soft, software. So we are uh, experienced uh, software engineers and developers. Uh, and also we have uh, artificial intelligence experts uh, in order to perform AI focused executive trainings. We can uh, perform the whole life cycle of a software project. So a software engineering and consulting for AI integration into existing health related workflows. Uh, we can uh, design and implement assistive technologies and software. Um, and we can also help with health related gamification powered co creation platforms. Uh, next slide, please. So uh, you can free, uh, feel uh, uh, to contact us. Uh, you can contact either me or George, who is also an artificial intelligence expert. Uh, through our um, emails, or you can just Google for sci-fi, the name of the company, and you can contact us through that. Uh, thank you very much. Thank you very much, Paul, for the concise uh, presentations. We move forward uh, with a presentation by Ms. Dora Dürer, which represents also an Austrian-based company. Mona, please feel free to take over. Yes. Hello. Uh, thank you for this great opportunity to present my company. Um, I've just uh, started with uh, my company in January, so I'm quite new in my business. So please go on the next uh, slide. Thank you. So we are a uh, uh, SME and a startup and a health tech consultant. So we help companies to develop and implement health technologies in such a way that they are readily adopted by the end users, including patients, family caregivers, health professionals, and healthcare providers, and also social care providers. So Duration knows the needs of the patients uh, and family caregivers, health professionals, and health care providers, and the requirements related to the healthcare setting, but also um, at the home setting where care is frequently delivered. And the uh, duration access facilitated between health technology developers and the users and helps the companies to understand the real needs and the user requirements of health technology. This the next slide. So what do we want? We want to collaborate with manufacturers of health technologies and operators of health and social care facilities in the development and implementation of health technologies. Um, based on user-centered design, design thinking processes, but also in um, research projects. Um, and our special interest goes to health technologies that are used for healthcare, health promotion, health optimization, um, such as health information systems, ambient assisted living, telehealth devices, wearables, um, and of course, the implementation of different uh, settings like hospitals, nursing homes, and all those living environments. Uh, at home. The next slide, please. Thank you. Um, so we're really looking for cooperation uh, in software development, app development, digital solutions, health tech, and med tech development. Um, and uh, we want to work with uh, different target groups um, and really use massive user involvement. So. We invite all health tech manufacturers and developers to uh, reach out to us and get in contact um, in order to um, yeah, foster the development and to support the development. Please go to the next slide. 
So we have competences in user and human centered design, co creative uh, and innovation fostering methods and scientific methods for the development implementation of health technologies. We have also uh, experience in uh, patient reported outcome measures, for example, and uh, at all in, um, in health outcome research. We have rich experience in healthcare, so we know how it is to work at the healthcare setting. And we have a broad understanding of the real needs of patients, family caregivers, and providers of health and social care. We have um, an in-depth understanding about the complex healthcare environment and the processes. And uh, as I already said, we have great expertise, expertise in the health science, social science, and technology science, and science communication. Please go to the next slide. Yes. So if uh, I would be happy if you would reach out. Um, here you can see our contact details. You can also scan um, this um, QR code and then you have my uh, contact details. You can contact me via LinkedIn or by mail or uh, you can also call me by phone. So I would be happy to get in contact with you. Thank you, Mom, for the really nice uh, presentation. I have really a quick uh, question uh, regarding the user-centered uh, design. Uh, what are the methods that you apply to uh, assess the end-user needs requirements? Uh, could you please mention something from your kitchen, so to say? Okay. Or uh, you, you mentioned you have some scientists at house, but do you work closely with, let's say, care, healthcare organization, etc.? Well, I work very close with different healthcare uh, organizations, such as hospitals, um, as the providers for social and uh, and um, healthcare. Um, so I really have access to patients and uh, the providers. And uh, we use, for example, focus group interviews um, to get uh, fast uh, insights into um, their needs. And also, of course, we use prototype typing. And what I really love to use is uh, Lego Series Play as a method where you also get really quickly to use the needs and uh, you can identify their needs and their imaginations yeah, and their expectations. Thank you very much for this uh, useful insights. Thank you very much. So let's move uh, forward with our next uh, presentation, which will be carried out by Mr. Giorgio Mihaletti and it's uh, about a big European project called Open Day. Giorgio, please feel free to take over. Uh, hello, hello. Thank you, Alexander, and thank you all. Um, if you don't mind, I'd like to um, share my screen. Is it possible? Yes, please. Yes, yeah. please. So I'll to I'll stop sharing. Can you see my screen? Yes. Can you see my screen? Yeah. Okay. So I'll put it in the um, in presentation mode. Right. So. Um, First of all, again, thank you for uh, for having me here. Um, my presentation is rather different in the sense that I'm not here to present um, a specific platform or a specific um, yeah implementation in the uh, the healthcare sector. I'm presenting a project, um, a Horizon 2020 project, uh, so funded by the European Commission, and um, this is a uh, coordination and support action. Um, spanning different domains, but one of them is um, uh, healthcare. So that's why I'd like to uh, spend a few minutes on this. Um, so what is Open the Eye? Uh, Open the Eye is a, as I said, is a coordination and support action. So we are here to, uh, let's say, support the work of uh, a bunch of different uh, Horizon 2020 projects. We have in our ecosystem around uh, 40 projects. Uh, spanning four different domains, um, we've got manufacturing, energy, um, um, agri-food, and uh, precisely um, healthcare. Um, we started already quite uh, some time ago in June 2019. Uh, we are um, towards the end of of, uh, of, uh, of our lifetime. The project will formally uh, end in uh, uh, in September, but we are uh, working at full speed and specifically. In the uh, in the healthcare sector, the, um, the companies, the logos you see in this uh, in this uh, slide are the, the partners and the beneficiaries of this project. Um, I'd like to uh, draw your attention on um, the uh, 
ethel uh, ethel uh, association so we have among our um, our partners the um, uh, let's say the SSH, the European eHealth Stakeholders uh, Association. So they are dealing directly uh, with uh, digital um, healthcare and uh, uh, and their own uh, their own platforms. And they are uh, what we call uh, our health and care ambassadors. So they are taking care of the uh, the group of projects in the healthcare sector. Um, what we are doing is. Uh, providing both technology uh, driven support and business uh, driven support to the um, uh, to the ecosystem of projects that we have now in this slide is quite small but uh, if you see on the right hand side uh, on the bottom the, there is a a, um, a picture with the logos of the projects that we are taking care of in our uh, in our ecosystem so um both uh so in in all the 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 domains uh, and therefore also in the healthcare domains we are providing support meaning uh consulting uh and tools and and consulting activities um both when it comes to technology and uh, business driven um support and we'll see how these uh, these two dimensions are uh, extremely, uh, extremely important. How are we doing this? Uh, we're doing this um, through uh, two main elements. I would say one is what you see on your left hand side are the task forces. So we have uh, a group of experts from these projects, uh, but also from other um, projects or uh, let's say other experts in the field that take care of providing content, let's say, around these topics that you see on on your left so uh, data sharing space of course so the data, data spaces are uh, becoming extremely important now um, business ecosystems the digital platforms pilot systems under business impacts um, but also on uh, more specific um, support by the different domains so also in the healthcare sectors uh, formed by uh, specific working groups and working groups are organizing webinars, um, specific calls on specific topics, uh, discussion fora, um, prizes, and uh, hackathons, conferences, events, and, and so on. Um, okay, this is just an, an explanation of our task force task forces, but it's not important to go into this. What I'd like to um, to highlight here is that these task forces precisely. Uh, touches upon different uh, elements of our support. So we're talking about the, the full ecosystems with technical uh, supports, but also about standards, uh, for example, the very important topic, uh, and also business impact. And this is something that probably um, has been a bit uh, underestimated in uh, in in the field, and especially in the uh, in the healthcare domain. Um, I mentioned the working groups uh, in the healthcare domains. Um, as I said, Ethel uh, is uh, driving the discussions in these different working groups. We have five of them in the healthcare sector. Um, you know, according to the different um, topics that you see here. So one is on communications and disseminations, use cases, KPIs for the benchmarking um, exercises. Uh, some. Um, one working group that is a bit more technical around uh, um, around uh, reference architectures, uh, standards, and reusable components, and one that is more regulatory around um, trustability and and of like like GDPR. Um, as a final um, say final um, considerations, um, this is something that we found. Uh, in uh, these couple of years of research and activities and support in the healthcare sector specifically, um, we can see that, yes, there are elements like architectural choices, um, some technical elements that are taken into considerations, but sometimes the uh, more business uh, constraints are not mm -hmm. are left a bit more implicit. Uh, when I say business, I don't refer only to money, but I refer to the fact that the overall uh, let's say sustainability um, of the action of the project themselves, and this is reflected also in the fact that um, maybe 
things like performers uh, or interoperability and maintainability and sustainability of the uh, of the different actions of the different projects are sometimes um, uh, a bit um, uh, not, let's say, uh, taken into consideration as uh, as they should be. Um, again, privacy enhancing techniques, um, we all know that are extremely important, but again, sometimes um, they are less applied or uh, left uh, a bit uh, on the side. And as I said before, if we look at the performance reports, uh, sometimes are missing. So there is, I would say in general, there is um, the need uh, when we look at different actions that are uh, funded and, and promoted um, by the European commissions, for example, in this, uh, in this field, there is a lot of uh, um, um, stress on the technical needs, but, but sometimes the usability and the business, um, uh, let's say, sustainability uh, is somehow uh, not taken into consideration as it should be. And with this, uh, with this few conclusions, I, I'd like to finish my, my presentation here. So thank you again for having me here today. Thank you very much, Georgia, for the really nice presentation. One question, when does open day ends as a project? When is the project end? So the project ends at the end of uh, September. Um, we are at full speed because the commission has asked us also to um, provide additional support. Um, we had a review recently, which went very well. Um, and uh, so it, we are not, let's say, in a phase where we are almost, uh, let's say, it's done and uh, we're not going to invest at, at all. Not at all. And there is probably the uh, the possibility that the project will be extended for a couple of months. So um, we'll be around for sure, I guess, um, either directly or indirectly until the end of the year. And you can always uh, you can always contact me for any any question. Great. Thank you very much, Giorgio, and uh, all all the best from our side uh, for the final review. Super. Thank you very much. Welcome. All right, so we move forward with our uh, presentations. The next one will be done by Mr. Johanne gomez Raya from Funda Salud. I see that you have already shared your presentation. Thank you for that. <laughs> Please feel free. Also, thank you for that. You can go ahead. Okay. I muted Sylvia. <laughs> okay. Uh, well, um, I, I'm presenting one project as well, a uh, project we are running in the Stromadura region, and I belong to the government of Stromadura in Spain, the regional ministry of health and social policy, uh, which is basically uh, the one that uh, used the idea uh, providing all the policies uh, in terms of social and, and health care. So my foundation, this part of the government is uh, managing all the research and innovation programs of the health and, and care system as used to uh, And also we are seeing a link uh, with other parties, with third parties, uh, in case of other uh, research centers in the region, in the Stramadura region, and also the private sector. So uh, what I told you, uh, what I brought here is one the Horizon 2020 project uh, called Comprehensive Treatment of Chronic Patients in Rural Areas. It's a PCP project, a pre commercial procurement project funded by Horizon 2020. In the project, we involve uh, seven uh, different partners from uh, four European countries. Uh, some of them are in the north of Europe and Spain in the south. I belong to the Spanish consortium, uh, and what we are doing uh, a part of the PCP project, we are exchanging uh, some practices between the different models in the north of Europe and in the south uh, of Europe, in this case, in Spain, uh, basically because we share the same challenge, the same uh, problems. And what is the problem? As you know, uh, in Europe, we are making really high all-age dependency ratio, and by 2015, we will have 
after almost 30 uh, percent of the population uh, on the uh, to five year old. And what we want in the Ukraine in Ukraine project is to be the Ukraine model for self care based in two different fields. One, which is self monitoring and self care from home. Uh, basically, uh, based on building uh, data lakes uh, with the most trending technologies available, and also combining it with the, what we call ecosystem for well-being, which involves all the different you know, parties around the pension, involving the healthcare system, the social care system, the local community, and business. And also the innovation in this field to be the integrated crane model for self care. Uh, we uh, want to, uh, we are in the preparation stage, we, we are preparing uh, the PPP uh, call for tenders and so on. And we need companies in providing solutions for, for our challenge. And we already performed the stakeholder investment. And we are Working and we actually did it at the moment time, uh, and everything will be based on uh, data lake or some system to exchange information to change data and also to enhance the new businesses ecosystem around, around the ethical and transparent use of data uh, to provide benefits to the patient and to serve and manage uh, all the chronic. Diseases uh, that we suffer, and especially the older population in rural uh, areas. We we want to uh, build a prototype that we will validate it in different stages, and we want to have uh, all these outcomes you see in the, in the right side of the presentation: improved life quality, uh, those that uh, suffer of complex uh, chronic diseases. An optimized use of health and care public resources. We want to lower uh, the need of hospitalization uh, of those patients, reinforcing and integrating the social care as well, especially in senior uh, patients, delay the appearance of current diseases and enhance local supply chains and PM generative benefits. Because in the end, you, as a company, we provide a solution that will be in the end scaling it up uh, in the, into the city. We, this is the, the PPP uh, timeline. Uh, we have some uh, events. We already uh, performed one in, e event in the 27th of March. Oh, sorry, on April, on April. And we have some events in May. Uh, you have to register if you are interested. You have to register, and in the events, we will provide uh, more information about the project, what we want, the more uh, uh, the challenge we have, and, and so on. Uh, we, in August, we will call, uh, we will publish the call for tender. Uh, in February 2023, we probably will have the final design solution uh, with the prototype in October one. More than one uh, year later, in October 2024, the first prototype and uh, the validation uh, will be uh, continued in April 2026. So we need a company, we need industry to uh, participate uh, in the call uh, for tender. And as I told you, we have the next event. The different parts, although you can register to all all events because all of them will be in English, uh, in Norwegian, uh, in Spanish, and the international event in Maine, and also one uh, brokerage event that you can register also uh, in, in the West. So please follow us in our website, in our Twitter account. We have my contact details there, and that's all. Thank you very much for, for your attention. Thank okay, you, Jolta, for the nice presentation. I'll share back you now mine. And we will continue with the presentation by uh, Sarah Cassidy and Hank Herman. Uh, please feel free to take over.
Yeah, thanks a lot for this uh, opportunity to talk about how and future collaborations. Uh, I'm Enke Hermann Nap. I'm a digital care coordinator at Philans, which is the National Expertise Center on Long Term Care. And Sarah? Yes, I'm Sarah Kazacha. I'm a assistant, assistant professor at the Department of Industrial Engineering and Mathematical Science of Università Politecnica delle Marche in Italy. Thanks. Uh, next slide. Yeah, thanks for that. Um, yeah, of course, we all know that the populations are aging, uh, fertility rates are dropping, and we have a lack of formal carers. Um, those are reasons that we thought, okay, we, we need to do something. And particularly if you look at the amount of people with dementia that is increasing, only in the Netherlands, it will increase from 280,000 up till uh, 500,000 in 2030. Um, so what we're working on is a healthy aging ecosystem for people with dementia. It will be an ecosystem of existing products and services that have been developed in many EU pro uh, projects. Uh, and we're also working on an AI driven dashboard. And we'll talk about it in a little bit. Uh, we do this with a consortium, of course, of international partners, uh, also from the Netherlands, Italy, uh, Taiwan. Uh, but we also have some following partners, uh, for example, the municipality of Aarhus. Next slide. Yeah, so here you see the bundle of um, uh, technologies that can support people with dementia uh, during the various phases. So, for example, in the first phases of dementia, it can be that they need a little bit of support, maybe in screen to screen contact. Uh, lifestyle monitoring systems can maybe have to be support. And later phases, for example, mo mobility tracking by means of GPS uh, will be relevant, uh, up to enhanced uh, sensors, uh, for example, for fall detection. The next slide. Yeah, so our main uh, end user group will be the formal carers, uh, because many of these products, they provide a lot of data, they have their own interfaces, their own apps. Uh, sometimes the app is only uh, available for Android, uh, the other time it might be only available, available for an iPhone. So what we want to do is to gather all the data from these devices for prevention and early detection. Uh, and of course, the dashboard uh, that is under development, where all the data comes in, should be really usable for the end users. So in the first year of the project, uh, we really focused on iterative end user design. Uh, we involved um, uh, many care professionals, data scientists, uh, but of course, also the formal and informal carers and people with dementia even. Next slide. Yeah, so our cooperation idea is that we really want to work further on a um, uh, and the development of a, of, of a quite a huge sensor network um, for indoor and outdoor uh, measurements. Uh, so, so not only live monitoring in a house, but also outside. Um, we're working on a methodology and would like to cooperate on that to gather high quality and accurate data. Um, we're also validating um, uh, algorithms, AI driven algorithms for early detection. Uh, and of course, we, we want to focus on, let's say, smart living environments. Uh, to support independent living, and in particular for how it will be the people with dementia. Next slide. Yes, I can continue. Yeah. From a technical perspective, we can offer and we are developing a platform that is open, interoperable and modular in, in which we can integrate several kinds of sensors from different perspective, but all the sensors have to improve the quality of life of the senior and also the caregiver. In particular, at the moment in, uh, in ALLE, we are integrating a smart mattress to monitor the sleep parameter of the user and interactive toys uh, to improve the capability in moving the hand and a training platform uh, to do exercise. All these three systems are uh, products of uh, the partner in Taiwan. And then we have, uh, uh, we are integrating also a social robot for reminding uh, feedbacks, a medicine dispenser, but also a system to monitor and detect falls, and a smart tablet that is fully designed for seniors, but also a GPS to track the user also outside the home and, and not only inside. Then the, the last um, system that we are, we are integrating is a lifestyle monitoring system to monitor the activity of daily living of the user inside the home. Next slide, please. 
This is an example of use case that we are in, in, in implementing in AL. In particular, we are integrating this force sensor to monitor all the day, uh, the, to remote monitoring the activity of the user during all day. In particular, so we are monitoring the activity of daily living of the user, but also we are uh, monitoring uh, the user outside the home with the GPS and also the sleep parameters of the user during the night. And we are providing feedback, for example, um, through a social tablet. In, with this system, we can uh, monitor all the circadian rhythm of the user during the full day. The, the platform is developed using an, app, uh, an Amazon Web Service to collect all the data in a same database, and we are developing uh, um, some uh, uh, artificial intelligence algorithm. We are implementing that to extract uh, information from this complex database that is the, based on dif different data coming from different sources. All these things to uh, develop and to implement uh, um, and monitoring some caregivers workload reduction, the well-being of the user, but also the dementia progression of the user. Uh, re in relation to the artificial intelligence, we are developing uh, and we are using artificial machine learning supervised, but we are also thinking to use uh, unsupervised machine learning. Next slide. These are our contacts, and we are really open. Uh, we are re really open to cooperation with other partners in a future project or initiative. Thanks, Thanks a lot. Hmm. Thank you very much to both of you for the really nice and uh, concise presentation. Just for information, we will have soon also the the platform profile how. In our hub, so please feel free also to visit our open information hub for more information on the project. All right, so let's move forward with the next uh, presentation, which will be carried out by Ms. Ergo Kutkun from Value Merch. Ergo, please feel free to take over. Thank you very much. And my name is Ergo Koskun uh, from Value Merch. I'm the founder and director of Value Merch. First of all, I'd like to thank you, of course, for this opportunity. Uh, Value Merge is uh, establishing the bridges between EU countries and Turkey regarding medical technologies and healthcare, which uh, the company is established in 2011. The main mission of the company is to uh, guide the innovations which are based on values and real needs uh, on the targeted market. Can we go to the next slide, please? Thank you. Uh, actually, in the portfolio of Value Merge, you can uh, see uh, uh, a lot of uh, different kind of innovations in medical technologies and healthcare. Uh, the, that's why it's uh, for us important to bring the um, uh, complementary uh, solution providers together uh, and with a helicopter view to land them on the as a solution of the need in, in the market. Uh, how do we do it? First of all, of course, you need to know the culture, business culture. That's why we are organizing trade missions to Turkey. And uh, secondly, uh, but, but of course, before we are doing this, uh, we are doing a pre-market research, uh, customized for the this innovation, complementary innovation uh, to, to, to land in the market uh, properly. And then we can proceed in the in the in the project uh, to to uh, go uh, to to go to different stakeholders uh, as pilot project or at the end uh, as a sales team in the market as well. Uh, and uh, in the other uh, activities of value merge, uh, we are also coordinating. Outsource service, outsourcing services from Turkey, which could be interesting uh, for partners in here in Europe uh, to cooperate together. And of course, at the end, uh, it's important to give a feeling from the market uh, by sim stim simulating the threats and opportunities from the market. We are offering these services by coordinating training and workshop uh, activities. Next slide, please. 
And uh, why Turkey? Because uh, uh, well, what is interesting in Turkey, actually, Turkey is in an emerging company, uh, country, uh, and also it's kind of mixture of Western and Eastern, Eastern uh, business cultures. So you really need to know which uh, so which uh, need you had to answer with your solution. So finding each other, uh, matching matching with each other is fine, but it's not always enough to uh, to uh, come up with a really needed solution. Uh, and Turkey is uh, still growing, and uh, despite of pandemic and crisis, still uh, impressive. Uh, strong GDP growth rank for you can see in 2021, and Turkey has a certain uh, centralized system, uh, healthcare system, which make makes it possible to uh, use all the uh, 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 solutions combined combine solutions in all hospitals uh, in in the region, and also personalized services. The patient can manage their own. Uh, uh, file uh, in Turkey, so this can be also an advantage. And of course, many facilities, uh, more of more than fifteen hundred hospitals, uh, so which are waiting for different solutions. Uh, you can imagine the Turkish the healthcare environment, where dynamic chaos in order, all the needs, traffic. So you really need to give a very simple and. Uh, sustainable solution in the market. So uh, the, the ambitious and competitive approach of the healthcare uh, providers also uh, advantage, and public and private sectors are competing and competing with each other uh, to give the best services. Actually, next next slide, please. Um, and we are seeking for solution partners. Who uh, would be interested in giving solutions, especially in home care in Turkey, regarding the uh, uh, healthy aging uh, in Turkey, the solutions in Turkey? Because uh, at the end, uh, it's uh, uh, in uh, 2030, it's expected that uh, uh, population over 65 would be. 13% in Turkey, maybe younger uh, than European uh, population, but still aging is an issue there. And then it's needed in the in the market to come up with home care innovative solutions. And especially when they are elderly uh, people, they are in, uh, in, the, in the families at home. So it makes it more important to uh, provide these solutions in home care. Next slide, please. And um, we can uh, provide you a distinguished networking, which means that you can go to the point uh, very uh, uh, um, trustable and relevant and professional uh, partners from the market to cooperate together. And you can uh, also even so uh, give uh, some uh, software uh, uh, orders uh, to the market, so you can use the outsourcing, and you can also um, uh, uh, gain from the regional uh, um, the um, supportive uh, uh, financing from the uh, from the country as well. And uh, if you need a fast practical and creative solution partner so we can talk about cooperate some partners from turkey next slide please um at the end you can of course take contact directly with the companies but you uh, if you want to have a helicopter view and if you want to merge the values not only matching the values maybe we can communicate and we can look at together how we can build up bridges together. Thank you very much for the opportunity. Thank you very much Andrew, for the nice presentation. Uh, the next presentation will be uh, done by Mr. Pietro Donizio. Sorry, Pietro, I, I, now I saw your message uh, in the chat option. Are you still available for your presentation?
Uh, Pietro, can you hear me? I think he cannot hear me. So we move forward with the next presentation. Any case? No, unfortunately, no. I cannot hear you. No, we can. We do indeed don't uh, hear you, Pietro. I see you talking, but the sound is not coming through. Uh, Pietro, if you agree, uh, we can you can... hear me now? Sorry. Oh, now we can hear you. Okay. So, sorry for this uh, issue. So I was saying that uh, nice uh, to meet you, everybody. I'm Pietro Dionidio from the SRL, that is uh, an SME located in uh, Italy, in Florence. And I'm delegate chair uh, of the working group health uh, within uh, the Alliance for the Internet of Things uh, Association. Next slide, please. So Medea uh, um, has different, uh, uh, well, Bernard has been also from uh, the Scuola Superiore Sant'Anna of Pisa and has different main uh, um, activities uh, that we accomplish with, uh, in particular, their impact assessment uh, approaches to generate evidence of the added value of innovative services uh, and solution, innovation management for value-based innovation adoption and scaling up of innovative solution, exploitation and impact assurance strategy definition, as well as project management. In particular, our main area of uh, application is uh, the social and healthcare uh, domain. Next uh, slide, please. This is uh, our core team, uh, so we can skip it uh, quite fast. Well, um, we are included uh, in uh, an international and international uh, networks. As I was saying, we are member and chairing of uh, a working group within uh, the IoT Association. <clears throat> And uh, we also collaborate with uh, uh, the WHO, the European Office uh, for what concerns the CIV network uh, uh, and in particular our task uh, has been related to the mapping of the COVID-19 pandemic impact on vulnerable population for what concerns uh, uh, Italy. Uh, we are uh, uh, vice chairing uh, uh, the ActiveAge.org association. That is an active uh, is an association that uh, uh, came out from a uh, um, already ended uh, uh, European project, a large scale pilot uh, uh, project on uh, on active and healthy aging domain and technology at supporting uh, uh, active aging. And then we are also founder member of uh, um, the Medi City Joint Lab, that is uh, a local uh, uh, regional joint lab that includes the University of Florence, uh, but also the local health authorities uh, and other different uh, type of uh, uh, stakeholders. Next slide, please. So, so. Uh, So uh, we participated also in international fora and uh, we also collaborate uh, uh, with Canada for what concerns the uh, mapping of best practices in uh, uh, telemedicine area. And uh, we are also member of uh, the Connected Health Innovation Center, uh, which is led by business and focus on the area of connected health in Northern Ireland. So next slide, please. So these are the main uh, uh, activities that we implement for what concerns impact assurance approach. So uh, this is the approach that we implement not only in the European project or national local project, but also in some contract that we have uh, with local uh, entities. 
So we start from a context analysis uh, for then going on uh, through an innovative uh, intervention description, definition of KPIs for impact assessment, KPIs in terms of uh, um, health technology assessment, but also uh, social demographic uh, uh, indicators. We promote and support the service monitoring uh, and we help also the stakeholder to um, to define a value-based a value -based evidence uh, in order to maximize the impact of uh, the implemented services or, or technologies. So this is just in a nutshell, obviously, because it's not, there is no time to go deeper in, uh, in, the, in the topic. Next slide, please. Uh, well, this is something that I have uh, already said, so we can proceed. Yeah, these are the main uh, uh, European project where we and we are still involved. The first one is the Active Age, that was a large scale pilot that involved more than 700, uh, 7,000, sorry, users uh, in the active and healthy aging domain. And now we are going on, we are member partners of the Faraon large scale pilot. That is a large scale pilot that is going to, to involve, to include 5,000 users uh, always in the active and healthy aging domain. In both these type of projects, uh, Medea was uh, and is uh, the leader for what concerns impact assessment, uh, impact assurance, and maximization uh, uh, activities. Next slide, please. Well, we uh, also developed uh, a dashboard for data collection and data quality, uh, where basically this dashboard is aimed for uh, collecting the information for from the users involved or recruited in uh, in a case study according to specific indicators and data sources uh, identify questionnaire mainly quantitative data but we are also uh, developing in it for including qualitative uh, uh, data but for the moment it's just quantitative next slide please so uh, we uh, have experience in project uh, management. Uh, we are uh, leading uh, an, an ambient assisted living, uh, living uh, uh, project that is Agape that just started the 1st of February this year. But we also experience uh, management and coordination uh, activities in uh, Fast Track BDNI. It was a Fast Track in uh, the orthopedic domain. In the open maker where Medea was consulting uh, uh, the, the real coordinator of this uh, uh, Horizon 2020 project that ended uh, in 2018, if I'm not wrong. Next slide, please. Well, yeah, uh, we uh, have a sister company. Uh, and for the sister company, we mainly we are mainly experiencing uh, exploitation and business modeling uh, activities. This is just to provide an overview and a panoramic of uh, our expertise. Next, please. And uh, uh, each year, due to, for, uh, due to the COVID pandemic, the, uh, the last three year, uh, this uh, event was missed, but Medea actually uh, organized uh, uh, in June uh, a Medea a, a summer school, uh, actually, that uh, uh, each year has a different topic, but the main field rouge is related to uh, assistive technology uh, in active uh, and healthy aging domain, but also in uh, the healthcare and social care domain uh, to poor, actually. The, uh, this year, uh, the Connected Health Summer School or Medea Academy uh, will be from the 20 to the 23rd, not 24th, as uh, it is in the slide of June. And we are finalizing the, the, the agenda and the program. So if you would have um, additional information, please do not hesitate to contact uh, me and we can manage uh, to provide you additional insight. Next slide, please. Well, yes, uh, another point is that uh, Medea uh, has, uh, uh, will 
is uh, co-organizing uh, a specific uh, uh, slot of discussion during the next uh, IoT week uh, in Dublin and specifically uh, the main topic will be related to artificial intelligence uh, and the, the slot will be the 21st of June uh, uh, at 5 p.m. Again, if you would like to have additional information on, on, this, uh, on this topic and also for attendance uh, purposing, please let, let me know. Next, please. Yeah, these are our main contacts uh, with the website. Uh, I really want to thank you all of you for your time. Thank you so much. Thank you very much, Pietro, for the really nice presentation. We'll get definitely in touch with you regarding uh, the KPIs that you mentioned for the assessment of end user needs because we have developed something similar in our project and it would be nice just to exchange some knowledge on that particular. All right, so we move forward with the next uh, presentation, which will be done by Mr. Angel Zola. Angel, would you like to take over? Hello, Alexander. Thank you, everyone, Hello. for this opportunity. Uh, you can go to the next slide. I'm going to be very quickly because, uh, you know, the lack of time we, we have. So uh, we are Fundación Fiber Voluntarios. We are a nonprofit based in Spain. Uh, what we basically do is promoting uh, digital uh, uh, well-being life to improve people's life here in Spain through several programs uh, to, to promote an inclusive digital transition, especially in this case of health for elderly people and also for uh, people with disabilities. To do so, we count on a network of tech volunteers. We have now uh, a network of 2,000 tech volunteers all across Spain, um, reaching the end users to, uh, to, uh, to provide them those digital competencies, but also testing digital tools and digital solutions that uh, all of your presentations were very, um, very inspiring to improve and give them autonomy through their through the daily lives. Our main slide of action is to find against digital divide in three fronts, territorial, gender and social through digital skills. Uh, most of our activities are based in uh, rural areas uh, and to provide these digital uh, skills to uh, through free courses and free uh, activities, events, hackathons and training uh, events. For, uh, for people that might be at the risk of digital vulnerability. We want to accelerate the, the digitalization of workers and companies, uh, SMEs, local entrepreneurs, startups, and little NGOs. Uh, we work with a network of uh, 1,300 uh, 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 grassroots uh, social-based organizations in direct contact with the end users to provide those services. Uh, we promote the responsible, sustainable, and ethical use of technology by society. And we boost citizen participation, promoting technological vocations also to boost digital skills and talent. Next slide, please. Uh, it's been 20 years uh, of digital transformation, all our activities uh, with social impacts. Uh, we think that digital solutions might uh, and must provide social impact within the, uh, with the, in, uh, the end users. And to do so, uh, we uh, act as a tester, piloting all digital solutions and devices with the end users, with all, uh, without in close collaboration with NGOs, municipalities, universities, SMEs, startups, providing new tools, digital tools, uh, public and private sector in close collaboration also with educational centers. We count with a network of uh, organizations working directly with elderly people and also uh, with um, uh, associations of family of patients in different, uh, um, different fronts uh, to provide them those um, digital, existing digital tools to improve the iterations of those digital tools from the prototyping phases to the more advanced um, uh, tool to give feedback to the technical teams to, uh, to improve the tool. With all those activities, we reach here in Spain 60,000 people 
to uh, to make them a more participative uh, society and a more uh, informed uh, society in those how can technology how can improve their daily lives in the next slide please our main activities are using those disruptive technologies involving artificial intelligence, big data, open source technologies, uh, in close collaboration uh, with the technical teams of the projects we are involved in, uh, to give them this feedback from the end users directly. Uh, from the very beginning, in the co-design with the end users, from the user requirements, focus groups, through the testing uh, phases and the final piloting phases of the product. We have been recognized by the Financial Times in, uh, as one of the 100 pioneers entities in digital transformation in Europe, in the Europe's 100 digital champions. Uh, it's one of the acknowledgement of all these activities. Uh, in the next slide, please. Uh, our way to uh, uh, work is uh, using open methodologies made by experts uh, uh, that might be replicable, sustainable, and scalable. We use the power of local basis network that we are very, very in strength uh, and close collaboration with local grassroots organizations, with, uh, with the end users, uh, to promote those alliances and at, at, a, at a local, national, and international alliances. Well, we want to create this, this global impact on how can technology is vital uh, to achieve the goals and to, to make uh, the end user uh, uh, participate in this, in, this, in this sense with all this feedback and uh, we all uh, creating all these um, uh, technologies always with the needs of the end users. If you go to the next slide, please. We, uh, in this uh, aspect with the health and uh, active aging, we are looking for new alliances in European projects. We've been involved in uh, European projects for uh, 15 years now. We are now involved in 10 ongoing European projects, Erasmus Plus and Horizon 2020. And we are looking for no, uh, new alliances to build impact in active aging, in lifelong learning, in well-being for uh, elderly, to give them autonomy with those digital solutions uh, by upscaling digital solutions created by the technical teams and um, uh, testing these solutions with a large base of end users in Spain. Uh, if you go to the next slide, please. This is uh, our European impact. We are working now with 83 partners from uh, different countries in Europe in different uh, uh, projects all of them, to be quick, are involving how disruptive technologies impact on European society at many levels, focusing in uh, people that might be at the digital vulnerability, like uh, in this case, elderly people. In the next slide, please, you have uh, my contact. If you want to contact us, uh, we will be more than happy to provide you more information and be able to uh, elaborate uh, future collaborations for uh, Horizon Europe or Erasmus Plus project involving these uh, groups of uh, end users. Thank you so much. Thank you, Anja, for a really nice uh, presentation. And then we move forward to our very last presentation done by Mr. Fabian Astig, Fabian, right there. Uh, can I share my screen, please? Of course, please feel free to do so. Thank you. So at Exacture, what we do is we, we develop a solution to properly use drugs. Our core expertise is around drugs and medication. And we created a digital twin that simulates the concentration of drugs in the blood of a patient based on his or her personal characteristics like age, weight, gender, renal status. And the goal is to help avoid underdoses, overdoses, and drug drug interactions. So, we're, what we're doing is mathematical modeling, and we propose a solution for patients and for healthcare professionals. For patients, 
it looks like a mobile, it's a mobile app. And if I am a patient, I take a pill, you can see that my simulation is green here. I will be covered by my drug based on my personal characteristics from this time until this time. It's all green. I have no underdose, overdose, or drug drug interaction. However, if I take another pill that I don't know has the same active molecule, my digital twin will do a personal simulation. And in this case, maybe it will turn red and it turns red. It tells me that I should not take this second pill because for me, this is an overdose. And for the healthcare professional, we provide a simulation, an online simulation tool, which is the, the image of what the, the patient has done and has taken. The curves you can see here, the curve is the simulation of the concentration of the drug in the blood of the patient I just shown from the mobile app. You can see the concentration is compared to the green line and the red line. It should be above the green line, but should be maintained below the, re the red line, which is the overexposure threshold. And as a healthcare professional, I can see anytime the patient has taken a pill, those are the green dots, and also the patient reported outcomes with the pink dots. And this can be correlated to the drug concentration. And this is unique at Exactio. And this technology can be integrated into your own platform. We have, as you saw, our own mobile app or our own online simulation tool, but this is not our core product. Our core product is personalized drug simulations. And we provide an API to integrate our personalized drug simulations as a service into third party platforms, into other mobile apps, or into other solutions for doctors and pharmacists and hospitals. So you can integrate our APIs into your own uh, platform, targeting hospitals, healthcare professionals, and patients. And what we propose as a cooperation is. Uh, together with a software provider for hospitals or a hospital to equip a cohort of chronic patients and doctors with our personalized drug simulations together because we are already working with hospitals in France on kidney cancer, uh, immunology, uh, cardiology, neurology, psychiatry, but I would like to move outside of France and do the same um, experiments in, um, in other regions of Europe. We are a medical device. We, our simulations are already integrated into the French leader of medical information, which is Vital, and we would like to do the same with in other countries. We, have, we are part of a Horizon 2020 project. We have the seal of excellence. We were mentioned in the, Har in the Harvard Business Review and most uh, we are working with U.S. company as well, U.S. companies and um, reference companies. Our personalized drug simulations are integrated already into several products targeting healthcare professionals and patients. And that's what I'm looking for here, the next uh, cooperation with a hospital or a software provider to hospitals. Thank you. Thank you very much, Fabian, for the concise uh, presentation. We'll definitely keep in touch uh, with you and your company. And now uh, we pass the floor to uh, our last presentation. Hello. Sean Herman. John, please, uh, Sean, please feel free to share your presentation. Yeah, sure, I can share. Thank you, Sean. Uh, I might need to, yeah. Uh, have you, can you stop sharing, please? Thank you. Oh, that's right. I think it's okay. Do this. Perfect. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, yeah. So, hi. My name is Sean Hearn. I'm a senior research scientist for Dell Technologies, um, uh, based in I'm based in Ireland. Uh, I speak today a little bit about the Brain Project, which is a, a European research project um, to do with big data processing and artificial intelligence at the edge, which features a healthcare use case. Um, so I don't think I need to explain who Dell are, but just to give a bit of background on uh, my group. So we're the um, part of the CTO research office. We're the advanced research group. Um, we typically look at um, the long horizon roadmap. So 
things that are five to 10 years away, uh, which means we'd look less at um, things that might incrementally improve Dell products, but more at you know, completely disruptive technologies. Um, over the last several years, we were, uh, worked in quite a lot of uh, European research projects. Um, we completed 14, I think, in the last six to seven years. We currently have six in progress. Uh, healthcare is one of our verticals. So uh, besides the brain project, we have a project called Life Chances, currently in progress as well, which deals with the distribution of high performance computing resources for cancer research. Um, we've also done projects in the past, such as SliceNet, which is uh, 5G network slicing for mission critical use cases. One of the use cases was, of course, healthcare. Um, we, we feed back all of the work we do in the research projects, you know, internally through things like studies, doing proof of concepts and demonstrators. Um, ultimately, of course, to distill the knowledge, but mostly to keep an eye on uh, emerging technologies in the future. So um, a brief comment on, on our work in um, European research. So uh, because we're purely an academic type focused research group within Dell, I, you know, I can't really speak on in terms of investments or, or whatever, but certainly because healthcare is one of our verticals, um, you know, if there's uh, any partner that, um, just any proposal in particular uh, that, you know, uh, would like a, a large industrial partner, um, you know, that's something we, we do. And unfortunately, because we're quite a small group, we, we're a total of 11 people and we typically don't coordinate projects. But uh, what we do is we provide use cases. We can provide resources in terms of high performance computing for things like stimulations or hybrid acceleration. Um, we uh, also, of course, you know, do technical work packages we contribute as you'd expect. And we also do uh, technical coordination. So that's actually the role that I am within the Brain Project. And so uh, as far as uh, European research Projects go. It's quite a large project. Um, it's got uh, 27 consortium partners across 14 European countries. Um, we're involved. Uh, I'm involved as a technical coordinator, so that's to you know assist, assist all the partners in terms of building the platform, uh, in terms of hardware and software, uh, integrating them all together, uh, deploying these cases on them, and you know uh, and development of the architecture as a whole. So. It started in May 2020. Uh, we're approaching the second year review of the project now. You can, of course, check out the project website. Um, uh, of course, lots of different um, SMEs, industrials, universities involved. Um, we've got four use cases, Smart Hospital, Smart City, uh, Industry 4.0, and Supply Chain 4.0. The, um, it's a, basically a completely new from the ground up approach uh, for both a hardware and a software platform. The uh, hardware, you can see a uh, rendering of it there on the left, it's an old image, we actually have some hardware built now. Um, it, the idea is to create what's called an edge micro data center, which essentially is to pack as much computing power into as small space as possible. Um, so that's the uh, rendering we see here on the left. I think you can get up to something like 512 CPU cores, you know, terabytes of RAM, uh, but it's uh, modular. So if you don't necessarily need uh, Intel CPU cores, you can swap them out for ARM CPU cores, you can swap them for GPUs uh, and so on. To, to fit your use case. The, um, the box is also designed here to be liquid cooled and magically sealed. This is relevant for the industry use cases where they want to put a device like this into a clean room environment, like a, a fabrication area, um, where you can have the device very close to your robotics, your sensors, and so on. Um, and you can do lots of things like digital twin processing, and it's not you know, uh, affecting the clean room environment. Well, we're not doing that for this front hospital use case. You can use a device like this, for example, in a surgery room as well. Um, so software architecture you see here on the right, uh, I won't get into it um, because there's uh, quite a lot to talk about here. A um, couple things to mention is the entire architecture is containerized. So that means that every single um, software block you see here is designed to run as a container, designed to run as part of a, uh, an overarching Kubernetes management platform. There's no hypervisor, there's no virtualization, but there is a high availability and data persistence and the type of system would provide. Um, it uses a lot of AI, so the workload placement framework is a uh, quite an advanced AI tool that um, uh, learns about how to distribute workloads across the different nodes and across you know, a, network of, uh, a network of these all put together. Um, and it, you can scale up and scale down and uh, even um, software blocks can be added or removed depending on your use case. So I'll move quickly then to the uh, use case, which is a smart hospital. So uh, in our case, some of the interesting requirements are the, um, the provider for this is uh, IMC, they're a medical device company based in Slovakia. Uh, so they've actually uh, decided that they want, uh, it's an on-premises edge solution, so that would mean the EMDC lives inside the, um, the hospital, and it doesn't actually uh, interact with cloud services. What that means is the entire platform 
has to be automated and has to stand up, uh, you know, has to be independent and be able to stand up on its own uh, or, you know, collaborate with uh, other hospitals, but not interact with the cloud. So it's got a uh, high performance requirements. So their, their application is um, patient sensor uh, time series analysis. So they're using a uh, digital twin model of patient sensor data. So uh, quite a lot of uh, processing and, and AI acceleration involved there. They also have a quite a clever system for verifying the sensor data that they're getting from the patients using blockchain. Um, of course, because it's a uh, medical data, got very high data protection, privacy control requirements, which um, is relevant, especially when you are talking about, say, if a patient moves from one hospital to another, can their data, can that workload be moved with them? I'll speak about that in the next slide. Uh, ultimately, of course, we what I what uh, I don't want to do from the technical leaders project is present a system to a hospital where uh, it's just another um, IT system that you know makes doctors go crazy. So ultimately, the whole point is, of course, automation and AI to make this as easy to use as possible from a doctor's perspective. Just get the patient details, attach the sensors, click a few buttons, uh, everything else is handled for you. So the example I'm going to give for how that works is. Uh, if you have, say, a patient that wants to travel from hospital A or be transferred from hospital A to hospital B, you know, and there's a lot of things you need to consider when you're doing that. You can have, if you're, you know, if you're going from uh, one hospital that's owned by one entity to another hospital owned by another entity, um, how does the transfer of data work there? How does the transfer of the workload work there? Even if it's the two hospitals owned by the same entity, you still need to have um, a movement of the digital twin data and the process that's actually processing that data at some point. But you don't want it to happen immediately because the patient won't be there yet and you'll have really bad latency and so on. So it has to be intelligent. Um, lots of things related to data policy management, which we have built into the project. So, for example, when you're doing this patient transfer, there's you know, three different levels of policies you need to look at before you can actually permit that transfer to happen. You need to look at, of course, your, your GDPR policies that might be related to that person's data. You might have local government policies, especially if you're transferring, say, from a hospital in France to a hospital in Germany, perhaps. Um, and if you're transferring, uh, and of course, you've got individual uh, patient consent policies that, of course, need to be in charge as well. Um, in terms of verifying, if you, in terms of verifying this uh, data policy management type th things, we've got a blockchain based audit log to guarantee basically that um, this uh, mainly comes back to a GDPR policy you know, called right to be forgotten, uh, which um, if you, if the user requests that their data be deleted off the platform, you need to verify that that happens in the correct time. and and that there's a you know a verifiable record to show that it did happen and hasn't been tampered with. Um, so as I mentioned, if you're moving a uh, patient from one place to the next, you need to uh, it needs to be kind of autonomous from the doctor's perspective. Again, you just click a button and it works. Um, but of course, when you've got a very latency sensitive process like a digital twin, you need to make sure that handover uh, is done intelligently, such that the you know it minimizes the amount of latency between the uh, the edge device, in this case, the patient itself on the 5G infrastructure and where they are relative to the two EMDCs. Uh, anyway, hopefully uh, from that explanation, you can see that this type of um, platform could easily be modified to support uh, a type of assisted living use case. You, you don't even necessarily have to have um, the EMDC could easily be located in a care home facility or in, in a hospital and the patients themselves, they don't have to be actually located at the, the hospital. They could be elsewhere and just connect it to the YG infrastructure, it would still work fine. So I uh, think that's it. If you'd like any more details, please, of course, feel free to reach out to me. Any collaboration on European research projects, again, please feel free to reach out to, out to me. And uh, for more information about the project, you can also you can contact me or the, uh, the project coordinator of the Brain Project, uh, Luke Jean from CMT. Thank you. Thank you very much, Sean, for the really nice, uh, interesting presentation. I'll share back uh, our presentation. Uh, just before going to the conclusive parts of this event, I would like to ask in the audience if there are any questions uh, towards the towards the presenters um, our event. If there are not such uh, questions, of course please feel free to reach out to them after the end of the event. We will also share the presentations with all presenters and with our project audience. So we'll definitely have more opportunities to exploit uh, potential collaboration. That being said, I would like to pass the floor uh, to our colleague and friend, Frederick. We'll mention a couple of important things about upcoming uh, projects.
Yes, thank you, Alexander, uh, for the uh, good moderation of this uh, very extensive panel. Thank you to all the presenters. Um, our aim was and, and is to to indeed bring together all these these different stakeholders. I think we heard from a lot of uh, uh, companies and organizations and projects uh, developing and providing platforms and solutions. We heard from people who work more on the, let's say, user involvement and experience uh, side of things. Um, and and so on so we had a good uh, yeah a good representation of of the entire ecosystem and and we already heard uh, a few people saying or or mentioning that they would indeed get in touch with some of the other presenters uh, to look at collaboration to look at the use and integration of of certain sensors into their systems and and platforms so so that was very good and and rewarding to hear and and we definitely encourage you all to yeah to go through these uh, presentations again they will be made available on the platform uptake dot eu uh, website um, and information hub so um so you can revisit uh, if there were things that you haven't fully grasped or, or been able to follow and and then get in touch with the uh, the presenters so so thank you once again to uh, to all and then just mentioning uh, also this upcoming uh, activity and event on the 13th of may where we will in collaboration with uh, also the Ferron project which you um, already heard uh, being mentioned a couple of times today uh, and our partner Caritas Coimbra in Portugal, um, who are partnering Platform Uptake, but also in Ferron, uh, who will be um, leading this webinar together with us and together with Arnora, which is a, a company in Finland who is bringing together a, a few uh, uh, Finnish companies that they work with uh, into this webinar. Um, and where we will look uh, a bit closer at uh, yeah, going from pilot to scale, uh, because that's, of course, uh, an important uh, returning topic. And we also heard it being mentioned a couple of times uh, today. So um, join us for that one. If, if you can, we will be sending out and posting uh, more details and more information very soon, um, uh, or at least additional information on, on the website. Uh, and we still have a few other things uh, on the uh, schedule in, in the coming month. So uh, stay tuned, uh, uh, continue to, to follow our communication channels, and we will be very pleased uh, to, to meet with you uh, once again in these uh, online events. Uh, I think that's that's it for today. Thank you very much. It was a very uh, extensive and, and long session, but uh, we heard from uh, 30 plus um, solution providers and then people active in, in the field of uh, AHA and, and AL. And so we all hope that, uh, that you have found it interesting and that you saw some and heard some things that can be useful for your own work, for your own research, your own business. Uh, so thank you once again. These are our contact details. So uh, do not hesitate to reach out to us if you have any further questions about this event or any other aspect of uh, what we're doing in, in platformuptake.eu. Thank you and see you soon.